Okay, this is it. More bad news.
Cool. alive where's what happened <sighs> I knew the founder was up to something I mean who else wants to visit the old ward huh look uh, I'm sorry you got involved in this traveler so uh, then what happened wait what Clementine where is she is she okay Sorry. I mean, Clementine, she she means a lot to all of us. We gotta find her. I'll get everybody together. If she went through the World Stone, she, she could be anywhere. Hey, I get that, but she could be anywhere. Do you understand? It's a World Stone. It takes you to other worlds. All right. I'll get Brabus and Riggs. I'll tell them to... to... Oh, what the hell am I doing? I don't know what's out there any more than you do. Oh, I'd be putting the whole town at risk. And Clem wouldn't want that. Hell, it's a miracle you came back. No. We gotta trust you on this, like you said. Is that... Is that all right? Thanks, Traveler. Talk to the folks around town. They should have any supplies you need. You, you know, Ford used to tell me, old Commander Ford, not the Founder, that a leader and a hero are two different things. The leader's place is always with her people. I thought she was just taking a dig at her grandfather for leaving all the time, but I think I'm starting to understand her better now. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, she's, uh, no, she's doing great. I can't keep her down, really. <laughs> As soon as she heard you disappeared with the Founder, she was on her feet. Nothing the Doc said would stop her. I don't know what she was doing all that time. Looking for you, maybe. Or just keeping herself busy. Anyway, all that anxiety of hers turned out to be pretty helpful. She, uh, she even set up shop over toward the, uh, the entrance gate. You should go see her. She don't show it, but she's worried sick about you. Keeps talking about leaving, but never does. I, uh... I've seen that before. Uh, 
Yeah, so... After you and the Founder went missing, Riggs and I went looking for you. Found the stone floating and glowing like the old days. And I had a hunch what happened. Not my first experience with this thing, you know? I wanted it out here this time, so we could help anyone who came through right away. Turns out that was the right choice. Who knows how long it would have taken you to get out of that old ward. <laughs> right. So, long time ago, when the route were still everywhere, I helped the Wanderer get to the oldest ward somewhere out past the... Eh, to tell the truth, I don't even know where it is. Now that's the thing about the Worldstone. They don't give you any idea where you are or how you got there. I don't know how the Wanderer got used to it. <laughs> yeah, that's what, uh... That's what they call him. Yeah, I didn't come up with it. Yeah, the, uh, the Wanderer did all the real stuff. Entered the ward, fought the route, found Clementine. Anyway, yeah, I, I know better than most. Anything can come out of one of these things. I, uh... I mean, I knew she was gone. I just... I just didn't know she was that gone. Clem takes off from time to time, you know? It's just... It's just her way. She'll... She'll disappear for hours, sometimes days at a time. Well, I never liked it, but... She can take care of herself, yeah? And, and it's not like I could stop her anyway. And she always came back, saying she just needed to be alone for a while. And I can respect that. I, I, I just... I just wish she'd talk to... Someone. You know? Yeah, well, the Founder's his own thing, ain't he? It's not the first time he's disappeared on us. Not even the fifth time. Commander Ford, the, uh, Founder's granddaughter, used to say relying on the Founder was like running across rubble. Now, you could do it for a while, but sooner or later, it'll let you down. Now, I don't know if I'd go that far, but Founder Ford, he was always more of like... Well, more of an idea to us than a leader. Hell, when I was a kid, everyone thought he'd been dead for years. But that's the thing about the Founder. He... he never stays gone. A week, a year, a decade... Somehow, he always finds his way back here. Hey, let me know as soon as you find Clem, okay? I... We're all worried about her. do for you. <laughs> of course. Ah, what's to say? I spent years trying to survive. Lost folks I love. Found new folks to care for. The same tale you're likely to hear from anyone else. This town, though. This town's a boon. Commander Ford's dream child. Ellen. Ford, that is. She's been building this place ever since the root started dying out 20 years ago. A beacon of hope, she called it. It's just a town to some folk, but a few of us see it like she did. Uh, you catch. She passed on a while back, but she's still alive all around you. In the folks whose lives she's touched, even in the bones of this town. And then there's her grandfather. <laughs> that old man's gonna outlive the Earth itself. She did. Saved my life. Me and my partner, Jed. And, well, then again after Jed died. She gave me a family. Folks to live for. <laughs> did that for all of us. When you meet Founder Ford, you'll know. Years don't have the usual hold on some folk around here. But Ford, <laughs> he's playing with another set of rules entirely. Started in that rusty bunker. Over there. Ward 13. Only a few of us back then. Hunkered in the dark while the Deadwood had their way up top. Until a wanderer. Not unlike yourself, came and changed everything. <laughs> uh, 
Wish I could give you a straight answer, friend. The storm itself spat them on our doorstep half dead. We brought them back to life, though, and before I knew it, they were asking me to work on the daftest equipment you ever saw. Never told me where they got it from or what they did with it. But I know this. It was them what set the route to rights. No doubt in my mind. Oh, uh, you'll see the others around. My, uh, <laughs> bilious colleague there, McCabe, old Reggie, our resident storyteller, and Bo, of course. He was just knee-high to a nightingale when Ellen took him in. But look at the boy now, eh? All right. What is it now? And it never ends. No, I used to be a real asshole. Now I'm a beacon of kindness. Uh, hard. Root everywhere. We did our best. Took in strays and tried to make a life of it. But it was no life worth living. Good people died. Few of us were brave or desperate enough to leave the bunker. The Wanderer, Ace, <laughs> ask Bo about the one time he went out. <laughs> he came running back like a spooked cat. The Wanderer. They were a very rare pain in my ass. I never told them that. Wish I would have. They were here and then gone. Just blew in, stopped a global infestation, and then poof, they left. I should have thanked them when I had a chance. Uh, Founder Ford got a bug up his ass about something happening back at Ward Prime. Bo was supposed to take the Wanderer back there, but he chickened out and ran home the first chance he got. The chronicles of our fearless leader. <laughs> Just a... an old friend. Oh, it's a miracle. Let's have a look. Causing trouble, stranger. Won't work for me. Questions? All right, sure. I guess I set myself up for that one. I told you the mud dogs didn't take hell from no one. And what anyone stood up to us without getting knocked down, save one. This mudder walks into my court, confident as a wolf in a rabbit trap. I'm thinking. This will be a fight to remember, eh? At best. Well, good for big then, game, but I noticed uh, something the mud has got on him. It's a watch. What belonged to my old man. I figure he finally tripped the branches, and I'm about to wring this wanderer's neck myself. But then hmm. the wanderer says the old well, man gave it to him. That caught me. The old man wouldn't give up that watch to no one but family. And he never gave it to me. I let the wanderer go. After taking the watch, of course. <laughs> but I couldn't stop thinking about it. <laughs> so I hear. Changed the world a few times that. over that one. Sometime later, I got the nerve to see the old man myself. He surprised me. He wasn't pissed or patronizing. Just sat me down and started telling stories like we'd been chatting every day. He didn't say nothing about the watch when I told him. Just glad it had a home. Tell you what, I think he wanted me to take it, the old bastard. Anyway, we talked a lot after that, and 
When word got out that folks here at the ward were starting something new, well, the old man and I both knew what needed doing. I told the mud dogs they were free to do as they liked. We weren't a pack no more, and the old man and I set up shop here. Kind of boring to tell you the truth, but better than a bullet hole, I guess. Don't know what else I can tell you, save the stories folks around here like to spin. The way they tell it, that wanderer walked through crystals to other worlds until one day they slammed the door on the Deadwood altogether and saved the world. <laughs> yeah, they all sound just like my old man with these stories. Who says they have? Deadwood is still here, ain't they? Maybe the bulk of them have just moved on or something. I don't know. I ain't complaining, mind you. There's definitely something different about this place. Maybe if I stick around long enough, I'll figure out what it is. Oh, that old mudder. People call him Mudtooth. <laughs> he's set up over yonder, and he's more than happy to tell you about himself. And then That's some. You wouldn't know it to look at him, but he was the leader of the mud dog before I took him over. They got soft, see? Couldn't hack it in a doggy dog world. Of course, that ain't the way he tells it. <laughs> we still don't see eye to eye on which of us was right. Disagree to agree, I guess. Well, the mud dogs ran for years. Started out with my old man in a place called Sanctuary, and eventually came out of here. We set ourselves up in a place folks started calling Cutthroat Channel. <laughs> Nobody came in or out without our say so. Uh, Not even Deadwood. Yeah, I, I got a story to could help me out. Well, I that ain't my old man. Time. He'll talk your ear off and then use it as a chew toy. Hmm. But at least I'll tell you the truth. That's so. Well, oh. it was a bad winter. I was got a bad. More. Even the Deadwood this. wouldn't go out in it. But they didn't need to. Goddamn Earth was killing us all on its own. There was nothing to eat, and I mean nothing. Mud ducks, we'd raid and steal, but there weren't no one to raid from. We'd threaten people's lives, and they'd laugh like it was a gift. Word surprising then when the dogs turned on each other. Started with one fool called Beers. He accused me of harding, so mm. I punched him. Yeah. Soon the whole it gang was fighting. It was chaos. Bleeding and shouting and cussing. Finally, I crack beers on the skull, and he don't get up. Quiet, I shout. And when I got their attention, I say, plenty to eat now. There's over a hundred pounds of meat on your average human stranger. When it like that, I would be stupid to pass it up. What? You think dog eat dog was some kind of metaphor? <sighs> Good. Got tired of answering questions. What you looking for? All right then, Wanderer. Keep your gun loaded and your wits about you, stranger. <laughs> I wonder if I can make a, a decent trap out of that one. Mm. Yeah, I took down a bear one time. No fooling. I mean, you know hibernating and all, but still a bear. The sun shines, the pestilence grows, and the dwell has gems for sale. Of course. <laughs> yes, that is... I am Pan. From the world of Yesha, where the Eternal Empress reigns, the Doe and Ravager run free, it is Paxentek. Yesha is keen mother to us all, yet she suffers. Long and long have the, the Pan have rebelled when I last saw her. Yesha languished under the pestilence. They are crafted using a special crystal. Long and long have the Gull used the crystals for weapons. What does it hope to steal Dwell's chain of supply? No, 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 no. Ah, yes. 
Only that which will make it stronger than before. the pestilence. It is you. The rumors had me thinking I might not ever see you again. Ooh, yikes. Yeah, they said you ran off with that old Ford fella and disappeared, and I ain't seen you since. Where have you been? You mean that big ass floating gym over there? Both said it can take you other places, other worlds even. Before we got here, I'd have laughed in his face. But I've heard weirder stories than that. And I can see on your face, it ain't all make-believe, is it? Feels like anything can be true here. They even healed my root rot. I tell you what, I might just start believing in fairy tales. Even Santa Claus and Fulton's Blend. Yeah, I don't know what's in that stuff Doc Nora gave me, but I ain't felt this good for years. Hell, maybe it was Fulton's blend. <laughs> ah, you know me. I get anxious sitting still for too long. So, I went out to the ruins and scrounged anything useful I could find. I was just doing what I do to survive, you know. Maybe get some things together for when we moved on. But then you didn't come back. And Bo said folks around here could use this stuff, so. I set up shop. So hey, if you ever need anything out there in the worlds or whatever, you just let me know. I got all kinds of stuff for trade. Well, all right. You know me, I don't settle so much as stop moving on for a while. Though I like any place with a warm bed and decent food, but now that I think about it, there's something different about this place. I mean, besides weird shit like floating crystals and girls that shoot light out of their hands. The people here are... They're good. They help each other. I... I think most of them like each other. I ain't seen that in a long time. Maybe... Ever. I don't know if you've met them all yet, but... Do, eh? They're... Good folk. And I can tell you who does what if you want. I've been around here long enough for that, at least. You'll want to talk to Reggie. He's got all kinds of cures and tonics. A fix to what ails you, he says. And while you're over there, see if you can figure out what's going on with that old mud tooth. He's got some crazy stories, but I can't tell if any of them are true. His stew's pretty good, too, once you get used to the smell. It'll keep you on your feet for days. Hmm. Have you met Dwell yet? That's the one. Says he's from some place called Yesha. I swear I don't understand half of what he's talking about, though. More than half. But the crystals he sells are like nothing I've ever seen. Might be just what you're looking for. I don't know. Why? You ready to move on or something? That's so. I admit, I'm starting to take a shine to it. This is the first place in a long while that's felt anything like 
home. I mean, you know me. Comfort makes me skittish, but I don't know. It feels like it'd be hard to get too comfortable in a place with glowing portals and talking goats. Anyway, I just want to stick around and see what happens next, at least for now. We'll see. Well, all right. Take care of yourself, you hear me? We've all lived through hard times. Some of us just handle it better than others. What can I do for you? What you got? Huh. Tons. The old humans, did you know? Or, huh. To think of all the folks Grandpa... Oh, there was plenty we could use. So much that Grandpa eventually stopped complaining about my scrounging. Most of the basic meds have long gone. But there's still plenty of specialized tools and ingredients there. Stuff no one knows what to do with from me and my grandfather. What they don't got, what I never found once, is a cure for root rot. That's why so many folks died when the root first showed up. All right, then. What else can I do for you? Of course. Here. You don't talk much about life before the ward. What you did and all? Oh. It was a hard time, I guess. I done some things I weren't proud of. I'm sure you did the best you could. Greetings, Trapper. What can I do for you? What would you like to know? Old as teeth, friend. Old as teeth. Everything we know comes from Founder Ford. That title don't come from nowhere. He was there at the start. When the world ended about a hundred twenty years ago, give or take a decade, Ford and some survivors took shelter in old Ward 13 over there. I don't know how many wards there were, but they were all part of something called the Dreamer Project that, uh, Went bad. Real bad. There are rumors. Uh, some say he made a deal with the Root, and that's why it's so hell-bent on stopping him. Some say he was experimented on in the Dreamer Project. Some say he found some kind of magic out there in the years when he was traveling the worlds. Truth is, nobody knows. Maybe not even Ford himself. Personally, I think Ford's just tough as dirt <laughs> and refuses to die. Ford and Clementine are the only ones what really know, and they don't like to talk about it. But old Reggie's got a gift for collecting stories, and I've gleaned a few things. At the wards, see they connected people to machines that made them dream about other worlds. But these worlds were real, and the dreamers were seeing through the eyes of someone that lived there. Uh, sounds like a bridge too far, don't it? It did for me, too. At least until I met Clementine. The story's pretty long, friend. Let me know if you get tired of the telling. After the world fell, see, Founder Ford carried the whole burden of what happened on his shoulders. Tell the truth. I don't think he ever put that burden down. But let's see, uh, where were we? Ah, yes. Founder Ford carried a heavy burden in those earlier days. Probably still does. But what could he do? At first, nothing. He pressed on with the work of helping others survive. If you ask me, that was the best thing he could have done. And it never should have stopped. Eh, maybe he wouldn't have if Evelyn hadn't. Uh, see, Evelyn was his wife, and she was something special. She could uh, hear the root, see what they saw. At first, uh, she thought she was going insane. But then she started using it, spying on the dead wood. And she saw something coming. Something big. She saw a monster, something the ward, the whole city couldn't handle. And only one way out. She communed with the root, 
I guess you'd call it, melded her mind to theirs and drove the monster off. But the root swallowed her, body and mind, until there was nothing left of Evelyn Ford. Her husband lost it then. He left the ward for months, sometimes years at a time, wandering the worlds trying to find something, anything that could stop the root. And one day, he just didn't come back. Well, now my story's not through yet. The Fords, they had a daughter, Nadine. She was maybe 17 when her mother disappeared. Too young to run the ward, but when her pa was gone, folks would ask her their questions instead. Then one day, she was just in charge of everything. Nadine had her own daughter, Ellen, who really made us who we are today. Commander Ellen Ford inherited her mother's pragmatism, her grandfather's doggedness, and her grandmother's willingness to make hard choices. So whenever someone showed up, uh, dehydrated, starving, half mad from loss, she took them in, taught them a trade in medicine and supplies, gave them a family. <laughs> so you were paying attention. I owe a lot to Ellen Ford, and we all do. And I miss her something fierce, let me tell you. She was one of the dreamers, if you can believe it. The only one still alive, as far as I can tell. She says she got sucked out somehow, dragged into her dream world before the root came to Earth. I don't understand it much. I reckon she don't either. But she found herself in a place called Reesum, a world covered in snow and inhabited by giant intelligent rats. Don't know how she survived. But I imagine it has to do with those powers of hers. Hey, that's the story I still haven't gotten out of her. It sure is. But power like that don't come without a cost. I can only imagine what it must take out of her to control a power like that. Oh, well, about 20 odd years ago, we had almost nothing left. Trapped in Ward 13 with nowhere to go and the route getting worse all around us. Then this stranger wanders in out of the storm, makes friends, uh, picks up some gear, and damned if they don't take the fight to the root. <laughs> I still don't know if that wanderer was crazy or brave or both, but they did it. They beat the root, and things got better day by day. But once it seemed safe to live outside again, Commander Ford made plans to build this town here. The wanderer was on a mission from the start, Said something about getting to the tower on the old atoll out there. Sounded crazy the first time I heard it. But turns out, that tower was one of the old wards. The wanderer's path wasn't easy, though. Our wanderer had to track down Founder Ford just to find a way in. And that meant following his trail. <laughs> just you wait. I'm getting to that. Well, Ford had seemed to have gotten himself mixed up in another world's affairs. Helping a rebellion out here. And he was imprisoned for it. Now, no one here knew that. But the Root Mother knew. And that's who our wanderer left to see. The Root Mother's got a story all her own. And I don't know half of it. Before she was the Root Mother, she was Evelyn Ford. That's right. The Founder's wife. Bound herself to the Root, she did. And it changed her. Turned her into something else. But when the wanderer showed up, she pulled herself out. The Root Mother, or whatever she called herself after that, sent our wanderer down a trail of sorrow, at the end of which was the Founder himself. The wanderer freed him, and used his knowledge to get into the tower, and destroy the last dreamer. <laughs> or what we thought was the last dreamer anyway. It did weaken the Root for a time, but I guess that weren't the whole story. So, the dreamer was dead. The storm subsided, but the roots, uh, they were still around. Then Founder Ford tells us about the oldest war, the first one, where the Dreamer project began. He hoped there might be some clue there as to why the Deadwood was still coming to our world. So our wanderer goes a-hunting. <laughs> they found more than even old Ford bargained for. You ain't wrong. The place was full of doors, and I'm not talking about the quiet human kind. One of these doors led to the world of Reesum, 
where the wanderer found Clementine. Clementine opened a door what nobody else could have opened. And inside? <laughs> I hate to admit it, but I don't know what they found inside. All I know is the route stopped coming when the wanderer and Clementine were through. They'd done it. Saved the whole damn world. Just making sense of things. Stories make us who we are. If we don't share them, don't learn from them. We're just bouncing around in the dark. She was a force, that woman. Found a Ford came back once. Uh, did I mention that? Almost 60 years ago, right after his daughter Ellen's mother passed away. Ellen couldn't have been more than 18 at the time. But she told him the war didn't need him. Didn't have room for some legend who was just as likely to leave as to lead. I reckon Founder Ford saw the wisdom of that. Because a while later, he left again and didn't return for a long time. When he finally did, he wasn't leading us no more. He was content to leave the ward in better hands. Ellen's hands. Ah, uh, well, she fell sick some time ago. Uh, most of us have lost folks without any chance to say goodbye. But we got that with Ellen. Why, she even made things right with her grandfather before the end, or so I hear. The two of them together put Bo in charge of the ward. <laughs> no one was more surprised about that than Bo. But you know what? He's the right man for the job. Ain't no one loves a ward. Loves these people more than the kid who was raised by him. He's gonna do all right. You yeah, might find some of these useful. Well, all right then. Take care, Traveler. Something you need, young'un? Well, shoot, Traveler. I might have some answers for you. Fair enough. You're not the first to ask for some today. Won't be the last, neither. Take care, young'un. Don't be a stranger.